Hello viewers, good afternoon. Welcome to our Facebook live session. Today we are going to have a live discussion on cancer cells but not anymore with our renowned doctor, Dr. Suman Das, Senior Consultant, Radian, Radiation Oncologist at Apollo Cancer Hospitals, Vaisai. On the occasion of World Cancer Day, so taking a motto as I am and I will, on World Cancer Day 2020, we are going to spread the awareness about cancer to our viewers. Namaste sir, how can you explain the disease cancer in layman's language to our viewers? Hello viewers, I am Dr. Suman Das, Senior Consultant Radiation Oncologist at Apollo Cancer Hospitals in Sagapatna. Well, the question that what is cancer and uh, how a layman understands it, it is very very uh, important that uh, we understand about uh, cancer. Uh, remember that our we as human beings are uh, we are made up of cells, three millions of cells that constitute our human body, and uh, each cell undergoes a life cycle and uh, it gets birth and goes through different stages and ultimately at one point of time it uh, dies and it's replaced by a new cell. Whenever there is due to some reason, maybe some genetic mutation or uh, due to some external forces, if at all the uh, uh, change in the, uh, if at all the change in the uh, genetic, uh, that control mechanism if at all there is a change in the control mechanism for the uh, uh, the cells are lost for uh, any cells, then we uh, encounter something called as uncontrolled growth of the cells. Okay, whenever this uncontrolled growth of the cells happen, then they form a tumor or a mass at that place, and from that uh, tumor, the cells then they. Uh, enter into the uh, bloodstream and then move to different parts of the body called as uh, disease metastasis or disease spread. So that is when the cancer, uh, the cells become cancerous and then they uh, get into the bloodstream and spreads to different part of the body. Okay, So that is called as cancer. In a simple word or simple sentence if I tell you, it is uncontrolled growth of the cells. Okay, doctor. Doctor, people say cancer is a deadly disease and they have a myth like it's a curse to have such disease. Is it so true? Well, cancer, uh, if you tell me cancer is not a uh, curse or something, uh, remember that the people have uh, blood pressure, diabetes. In fact, cancer is a better disease than blood pressure and diabetes. Why? Because uh, if, you, if a person gets blood pressure or the diabetes disease like that, throughout the life he has to yeah, take the tablet or take the treatment. In case you stop the moment, then the blood sugar rises. But cancer, if at all we are diagnosed at an early stage, then the chance of cure is very, very high. The patient can be cured for life. And uh, further, like he may have to undergo certain treatments like chemotherapy, radiotherapy, or surgery. But the with this treatment, the disease uh, can be completely cured. Whereas other diseases uh, like diabetes and blood pressure, it's not like that. Okay, so the cancer, having a cancer disease, is not a cause or not the not the not the end of the day or end of the world. Okay, the, in the present day, if a person suffers with cancer, he can be uh, treated and he can be cured. There is definitely very good chance of getting cured. Whenever we see in our clinics more than 50 to 70 percent of our daily OPDs, daily uh, patients that they come to see us are our old patients whom we have treated three years, five years or seven years back. And they are the people who actually inspire us to tell you that cancer is curable. You can get back to your normal life even if someone is diagnosed with cancer. The only thing is that the earlier the diagnosis is made, the earliest stage the diagnosis is made, the disease can be completely cured. Okay, doctor, can you explain the risk of factors of cancer? Because patients always have a question, why only me? So the uh, risk factors of cancer, uh, we can basically divide the risk factors of cancer into something like uh, which we can modify or which we cannot modify. Let us say which we cannot modify, then it is like the 
suppose the family history or the environmental factors or the uh, pollutions uh, or the exposure to carcinogenic or cancer causing agents that we commonly face in our environment those things we really cannot change it okay uh, let us say a person working in an asbestos uh, environment asbestos industry or uh, some uh, industrial area they are more susceptible for certain diseases like lung cancer or something but uh, those things we really cannot change other than taking certain precautions at the workplace but what we can change is like those risk factors where uh, like using uh, tobacco or uh, chewing tobacco or smoking those are the uh, things that uh, we can comfortably avoid and avoid getting the cancer having a good lifestyle uh, doing daily exercises having good food avoiding junk foods so these are the things that we can avoid and can prevent the cancer all right sir does cancer affect all parts of body and the sign and symptoms of cancer is the same for all parts cancer remember as i told in the first part uh, that the uh, cancer is uncontrolled growth of the cells so any part of the body which is uh, formed by which which is formed by the cell that means our entire body from head to toe when the, that is formed by the cells they are susceptible to get cancer just remember if a person is uh, the question that you ask that why me okay so i always tell you that a person is walking on the road has got a chance of getting accident or a person uh, going on the aeroplane or a helicopter even personal helicopter uh, with all precautions also can have an accident similarly all the cells in our body every individual in the world they have got chance of getting cancer so that is it is just like another disease like diabetes or blood pressure anyone can have similarly cancer can also happen to anyone so we really need not to think that uh, why i have got the cancer i didn't have any bad habit i didn't have any smoking history so and so had smoking history but still he didn't have any cancer till now but i am having that so that is not the fact we should be thinking that yes maybe we are diagnosed with a disease called cancer but at the same time we are lucky that we are able to discuss about cure for that cancer so that's what we have to think that's the attitude that we need to go for the treatment of cancer okay having a cancer is not at all a problem in the present day cancer every family someone or the other is having a disease uh, a cancer or some of our relatives they are having cancer but what is important is that we are diagnosing it at an early stage we are treating it in the correct line and we are thinking of or we are talking of a cure for the disease we are thinking that we are estimating that the patient can go back to the uh, normal lifestyle after the treatment okay so never get disheartened that why your relative has got cancer or why your uh, why this so and so my uh, relative has got cancer we should not be really disheartened it is it if it if the disease has been diagnosed we just need to see the doctor get the right treatment done. there is definitely a chance that the disease can be cured so how would a person suspect a symptoms uh, to be a cancerous in their body well the uh, symptoms like uh, let us say from the uh, mouth uh, like if at all we get a ulcer in the mouth okay remember that suppose you get a offer from somewhere uh you get an offer from somewhere that so and so we are giving you uh this and free okay if anyone is giving you free remember that there may be something behind it similarly in cancer the those cells cancerous cells give us a free tumor or free mass without pain okay so any tumor or any mass or any ulcer in our body without any pain could be a cancerous growth it can be in the mouth it can be in the lips it can be in the throat or it can be on the skin okay or it can be in the in our food pipe it can be in the stomach all right so let us say in the mouth 
mouth they uh, usually they present with a small ulcer okay which is uh, growing in size and is painless especially with a history of uh, chewing tobacco or uh, taking uh, or smoking okay or maybe uh, there is a grow there is a node or a nodular growth over the neck and which is increasing in size and there may be one node one month back now uh, it has uh, become two or three nodes okay or there may be change in the voice of a person last uh, one month the person has a change in the voice okay that can also be a throat cancer or a voice for cancer of the voice box suppose we may patient may complain of pain in the throat okay or patient may complain of difficulty in uh, difficulty while swallowing okay or patient may complain of long term uh, like for one month two month or three month he may be having a gastritis or acidity problem of the body or gastritis or acidity in case like you are visiting a doctor he is prescribing some antacids and then again the problem is still persisting in such a situation just tell the doctor to have a proper check up to endoscopy and then it can be diagnosed or let us say uh, a person is having a altered uh, bowel habits or altered um motion like suppose you go for once or twice in a day but uh, last one month the person is feeling like going to motion for uh, nearly seven to eight times a day but really not passing motion or passing blood in the motion or let us say someone is having uh, passing uh, blood in the urine or let us say someone is having uh, um, increased frequency of Uh, going to urine or maturation uh, in the night especially the older age people that can be a bladder cancer or a uh, prostate cancer so these are the signs and symptoms that we commonly face but remember at the same time uh, these symptoms are not always uh, they say that it is cancerous if this these symptoms are there then you may have a disease like a cancer but uh, it uh, is not always that so you need to just see a doctor so remember one thing if you are getting anything free of cost without pain a lump or a mass in any part of your body without a pain and it is increasing in size okay then remember to see your doctor if your doctor is uh, giving you the medication and in spite of the medication the disease is still continuing for 15 days or one month then have a proper thorough checkup okay that is how we can actually diagnose cancer at the earliest stage okay, okay doctor we have a question from one of our viewers so what is the difference between a cancer and tumor as i told in the first thing that the uh, tumor uh, the cells they have uncontrolled growth of the cells and what happens that they will uh, uh, they will basically accumulate at one place okay when they accumulate at one place they will be called as a tumor when those tumor cells they cross the barrier there is a lay membrane or a layer uh, whenever they cross that layer and go into the start going into the blood vessels then that is when they are termed as cancerous that means a tumor is a benign tumor or a benign mass that won't spread to other part of the body whereas a uh, malignant or a cancerous growth that can spread to other part of the body okay doctor as you said because of the lump or node and how to do the early diagnosis and what is the meaning of the screening and how does it help in diagnosis well first of all remember that remember to uh, the scapson that south when you are in doubt that means if you are really having a doubt that the growth or a mass or a lump that you are having it could be a cancerous one immediately go to the doctor and ask the doctor to examine you okay ask the doctor to examine you if it is needed to uh, do a in uh, endoscopy or a ct scan if it is really essential get it done okay that is the best way that you can uh, diagnose uh, your uh, cancer at an early stage then coming to the screening test screening tests are those tests which are uh, defined to be easily accessible and are simple okay they are simple test 
they are easily accessible they are cost effective and they are very sensitive sensitive means that test if at all it is positive then there is a very high chance that it could be a cancerous okay so those tests are called as screening test we do this screening test so that we can uh, diagnose the cancer at early stage let us say a breast cancer a breast lump we can really touch and feel or know about a breast cancer physically uh, when it is of a size more than 1 or 1.5 cm size but uh, if we do a mammogram we can comfortably see it those features uh, for particular features of mammogram which are suspicious of uh, cancerous that we can see even if it is smaller than 1 cm size okay and let us say prostate cancer prostate cancer there is a test called serum psa1 test is prostate specific antigen one test is done if the psa is elevated or increased psa is there then definitely we suspect that major there is a maximum chance that it could be a cancerous growth in the prostate okay so we need to further evaluate on that and that is the reason why screening tests are promoted more and more in the present day and these are the events like world cancer day or cancer awareness month so these are basically done in order to promote the normal individual who is having a normal life or normal thing to check himself like we are doing a cardiac check up we are doing a normal uh, routine blood check up similarly just do the simple test if at all there is a cancerous uh, suspicion of cancer we can diagnose that at that stage okay okay sir as we all know that apollo is facilitated with good equipment does apollo cancer hospital help people to do screening tests at affordable prices yes uh, apollo cancer hospital we have uh, designed these screening packages at very very affordable prices with uh, simple tests like uh, uh, ultrasound abdomen x ray chest mammogram pap smear okay all these tests and routine blood test for females and in males we have added the uh serum psa test so these are the tests uh, that are done along with the doctors like oncologist and gynecologist consultation for female and oncologist consultation for the male these are done uh, as a package at very very uh, discounted prices uh, at apollo hospitals and i urge all our viewers to definitely uh, it is very very productive in the last a uh, few last month we did uh, we could diagnose more two patients from uh, the 15 patients did the test out of the two patients had uh, the disease so so that is the advantage is that the patient are diagnosed at the earliest stage one simple test or one simple uh, treatment simple surgery or simple treatment can actually a curative thing for that uh, disease and if that is not done the screening is not done then the disease will be diagnosed at one point of time but it will be it may be bit late so always if at all uh, you are finding those cancer screening uh, opportunities get it done and that can help you to diagnose cancer at a very very early stage okay doctor so we have uh, another question from uh, one of the viewers so what are the preventions that we have to take care to get to prevent from cancer remember cancer is uh, completely we can prevent cancer by changing our lifestyle okay we can ch change our lifestyle in the sense avoid smoking avoid chewing tobacco maintain good lifestyle by doing uh, regular exercises do any exercise that you like like let us say Uh, you like to play tennis you like to play go for a run every day you like to go for a morning or a evening walk whatever do exercise maintain good health even people uh, nowadays because of the junk food because of our sedentary habits we go for uh, we uh, patients our people become more obese or fat okay in such situation they may not be directly related to cancer but the obesity has definitely has some risk factors involved as far as breast uh, cancer is concerned because of the hormonal imbalance and apart from that you are also at risk of uh, getting other diseases like cardiac disease lung disease all that so remember 
the best way to be healthy the best way to uh, prevent diseases like cancer is to have a good lifestyle maintain a disciplined lifestyle uh, go for exercises every day have good green leafy vegetables okay and then uh, uh, what do you call avoid uh, smoking and chewing tobacco avoid drinking alcohol at a regular basis so these are the precautions if you take there is definitely uh, good chances that we can prevent cancer we can prevent ourselves from getting uh, disease like cancer okay doctor so uh, how significant is family history to have a risk of cancer well uh, family history remember i'll just uh, tell you that the uh, if a glass uh, if a person is having a cancer if a person is having a cancer then what type of cancer it is whether it is having a genetic predisposition or genetic level uh, predisposition is there that the family history can be uh, important for causing the cancer that we need to see not all the cancers have got pred familial predisposition like breast cancer uh, ovary cancer colon cancer these things have got a lot lot chance of getting uh, familial predisposition but at the same time remember there is 5% chance of getting family history of when family history there has got 5% predisposition of getting a cancer so we may look at it at uh, as 5% chance of getting cancer or we may look at it at uh, 95% that we don't have chance of getting cancer that means we are only at 5% risk of getting the cancer okay so for that what we have to do is that in case uh, our first degree relative first degree relative means let us say our mother father brother and sister they are our first degree relative suppose you get a accident you fall down from a bike and who are the people who take care of you your mother father brother and sister they are the main people who will take care of you so they are your first degree relatives the people who come and see you uh um, see you with a colleagues uh, or uh, yeah and just ask where uh, and just pay visit and go there is your second degree relatives okay so whenever our first degree relatives have got a cancer cancers also like breast cancer ovary cancer then the we have a 5% risk of getting cancer even at that also whenever uh, there is factors like having a cancer at an early age having breast cancer in both the breast having breast cancer and ovarian cancer at the same time so these again further increases the risk factor so in india uh, we really are not routinely doing the genetic counseling and all but definitely whenever a person uh, is having a breast cancer or ovarian cancer at an early age or having bilateral breast cancer we definitely advise the family for uh genetic counseling and uh going for the uh genetic testing for the uh family that will basically help us to define if the other uh, daughter and all they can have the uh, scope for doing some test and uh, uh knowing or diagnosing cancer at an early stage okay doctor so now it is uh, we see a lot of throat cancers and so why pandemic cancer is common in part of india how would a person suspect he is having a cancerous growth in pandemic i already told about the uh, signs and symptoms of pandemic cancer remember that yes pandemic cancer uh, incidence or the uh, chances of getting pandemic cancer uh, in india especially this part of the uh, country is very high it's mainly because of the tobacco okay so nowadays we are seeing very very young people getting uh, tongue cancer or uh, throat cancer so these are really risky because of the uh, use of the uh, tobacco if our uh, young people they uh, avoid getting uh, you habituated to this kind of tobacco or smoking definitely the chance of uh, getting cancer for them will be less and as you ask the signs and symptoms uh, again i will just tell if you are getting anything free of cost be aware of it like let us say you are getting a ulcer or you are getting a mass without any pain okay let it be in your mouth or in your neck okay 
then be careful or there is anything change let us say you are having throat pain for longer duration of time let us say you are having uh, uh, swelling in the neck for a uh, which is increasing in size or let us say hoarseness of voice or change in the voice quality uh, of a person then or you are having difficulty in swallowing the food especially solid food you may suppose you take one bite of uh, rice and dal uh, but after that you are not able to swallow it you have to take bit of water after that after taking that then there is definitely there is some obstruction at this place uh, in the food pipe so that can also be a cause of a cancer so the head and neck cancers are common and the reason for it is um, smoking and tobacco and we should uh, avoid getting habituated to this kind of uh, this kind of habits to prevent ourselves from getting cancer okay sir uh, so we have one of our viewer, Mr. Alam. We have asked a question that how to prevent cancer. But Mr. Alam, we want to say you that we have already covered this how to prevent the cancer. And uh, uh, doctor, can you suggest any suggestions to the people who want to know more about uh, cancer treatment? And yes, as Mr. Alam has asked about which food to avoid prevent or prevent cancer. Basically, uh, there are certain. Uh, uh, things like seafoods or let us say uh, red meat they, they have got some chances of getting uh, colon cancer and uh, other than that you are always advised to take uh, green leafy vegetables which have got more antioxidants and uh, that prevents definitely that can be helpful to prevent cancer more than that uh, avoid the junk food avoid getting obese and uh, have a healthy lifestyle to uh, prevent cancer. Okay, viewers, uh, I hope that we had a very good healthy session with our Dr. Sumandas, who is a radiation oncologist. On this uh, World Cancer Day, he has given some such uh, awareness and some statements regarding the prevention of cancer. If you people want to connect with Dr. Sumandas, you can uh, connect him on ApolloAsk.com. And Doctor, we have another question here is, uh, ileostomy conduit can reduce survival rate. No, not really. Ileostomy, why this ileostomy conduit has been done, that is important. Okay. Ileostomy conduit means that means someone, uh, some tumor may be there at uh, that place, ileum area, and then it has been operated, and then uh, it, there is a conduit or a bypass has been done. So it has got nothing to do with the survival rate, and uh, uh, the reason for it. The reason why that areostomy has been done, what was the primary disease, those things really uh, have uh, importance at this place. So you need to really consult your uh, uh, gastric surgeon who has operated uh, this and uh, then they will basically advise you that areostomy has got nothing to do or no relation with the survival rate. Alright, so thank you for your valuable time. On this World Cancer Day, I would really, uh, before we wind up, I would really tell all the viewers that remember cancer is not, cancer diagnosis of cancer is not end of the world. If someone is diagnosed with cancer, then uh, definitely there is a chance of cure. You just need to consult your doctor and uh, uh, see what are the options of treatment, have a proper uh, battery of tests to know the stage of the cancer and once you know the stage the treatment is defined and the treatment consists of chemotherapy radiotherapy and surgery and the sequence of the chemotherapy radiotherapy and surgery are defined based on the type of the cancer site of the cancer and also the uh, stage of the cancer so those things are discussed by the your oncologist in their um, uh, uh, the uh, tier, tier, tumor board or multidisciplinary tumor boards and they, the, a proper treatment or the first treatment is always should be the best treatment and never be afraid of getting uh, being diagnosed with cancer and uh, it can be really in the present day are treatable and also curable if they are detected at an early stage. Thank you very much. Thank you sir.